Welcome to Revival is Here Again with Apostle Goodhart. God is about to speak directly to you as this message is guaranteed to impact your life. As you listen today, expect that God's Word has been sent in your direction to bring about revival, healing, restoration, and transformation. With faith in your heart and great expectation, join me to receive God's Word through his choice vessel, Apostle Goodheart O. Equeme. Exodus 15, 26. Olo manakata. And said, If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, plural, and keep all his statutes, plural. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought or I have permitted upon the Egyptians. Hear this, it's my message. For, and for is there for a reason. For I am, Kotaya. He said to Moses, tell them, I am who I am. That means I can be for you what you want me to be. I can be your deliverer. I can be your husband man. I can be your healer. I can be your lifter. I can be your promoter. I am that I am. In this case, I am the Lord, capital, that he let me. For an assignment, divine healing and health, a matter of covenant. Lord, we lift our voice once again to bless you. I beseech you, my Father, to take a coal of fire from the altar of heaven and on the lips and the tongues of clay of your seven sons that this hour I will come to your people on site and online across the nations with a thus saith the Lord. Move every man, boy or girl, under the sound of my voice from where we are to the place called destiny. We have us always to give you alone the praise, the glory and the honor even in the name of Jesus. Let your church be edified. Let every devil be terrified as Jesus alone be glorified. In Jesus name we pray. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. You may be seated comfortably in heavenly places. Divine healing and health a matter of covenant. Saints there is no doubt that divine healing and divine health are precious blessings from the Lord for his people very precious blessings I've said over and over again and taught without fail that the next desirable blessing any believer should pursue and pant after salvation is that of divine health because for all intents and purposes health is well it will surprise you today there are many wealthy who still cry because it's not only the poor that cry. There are many who are, have amassed all kinds of wealth today. But perhaps they are bedridden by some terminal disease. Hear me real good. Right there on the bed of affliction, at death throes, these men or women as the case may be, they are whispering a simple cry. God. If only you give me life to enjoy this money, I will give up all this money for health. Are you here? It simply means, beloved, that we must be grateful for both a sound mind and grateful for good health. Because money cannot replace a sound mind and good health. It's a gift from God. To be told is that it is wisdom and actually preferable to be healthy and strong and vibrant, believing God to bless you financially, materially, economically, hear this, than to be rich, so-called rich, because I don't call that being rich, so-called being rich and mass wealth, yet lack the hell to enjoy the so-called wealth. It is a great joy to know, beloved, that 
as far as redemption is concerned, as far as the covenant is concerned, we don't have to pick and choose. You don't have to pick and choose health over wealth or wealth over health. <laughs> it is part of the package of redemption. The Bible declares in Psalm 105 37, KJV, He brought them forth also. Say with me, also. Also means in addition, with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble. The word feeble means not was weak. Feeble person among their tribes. Hear what the TPT says. I love this. At last, God freed all the Hebrews from their slavery and sent them away, away, laden. You know what it means to be laden? Heavy load. When you're laden, you're loaded. You don't like being loaded. I want to be loaded. Loaded with the silver and gold of Egypt. <laughs> and not even one was feeble on their way out. There is a footnote in TPT. Hear this. It says, not one of the tribes was a pauper. Yes, sir. TPT. Footnote there. Not one of the tribes was a pauper. So in redemption, it's a full package of health and wealth. John 10.10 10 gives us a very clear, vivid picture of the blessings of salvation and redemption. The Bible declares in the NPC, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. Good news. I, Jesus, came that they may have and enjoy life. And have it in abundance. Abba, we should go home. To the full until it overflows. This is the picture of the life God made available and affordable to you by the blood. It is yours for the taking. It's not a measured life. It's not 50-50. No, sir. It's to the jail, to the mill, to the maximum, to the upper, to the zenith. Life that is described as abundant life, overflowing. This is a life redemption has made available to you, but also, I dare say, affordable for you. The price is paid whether you place a demand on what is rightfully yours will be your responsibility. He came to give you life. And he says that you may enjoy, enjoy, not endure. There are things to be endured along life's journey, but life is to be enjoyed. Saints, one prayer I oftentimes pray, especially when I am opportune to be at birthdays of people. And that prayer is taken from Proverbs 9.11. I'll pray it before I read the scripture. Hear this. This is for you too. May God add yes to your life. Say amen. May God add life to your yes. Let me say it again from my belly. May God add yes to your life. May God add your life to your yes. Shout the big amen. That means you will not just enjoy long life as in longevity. Abba, there are some old men you are begging for them to die and go home. Why? Responsibility and wahala for their family members. No, sir. Hear this. <laughs> For by me, who's that? Wisdom from God. Your days shall be multiplied. Uh -huh. 
and the years of your life shall be increased. Increased years means longevity. Nothing takes you out prematurely. At 80, your back will be straight. No walking stick. Your eyes will be seen clean and clear. Your mind will be sharp. Memory recall of when you are 5 and 10. Ah, ah, that is long life, quality, and quantity. As the days are multiplied, that means one day will be like 10 days. Quality of life and quantity of life. Hallelujah. Now we begin to teach. Let me begin by mentioning very clearly, and you agree with me, that there is nowhere in the scriptures you will identify that sickness or disease has its origin from God. No, sir. No, sir. In the book of beginning Genesis, after God had made man, he concluded with the last verse in Genesis 1. Says, and God saw everything that he had made, including Adam and Eve. And behold, it was very good. Very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Hmm. There's no way that you see that sickness came from God. As a matter of fact, he's the one removing it from people. We read in our text moments ago, he introduced himself as one of his covenant names, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rufeka. What does that mean? I am the Lord that he led thee. One of the first covenant names he introduces us to is himself as a healer. Not a cause of sickness. He cannot use one hand to put another to remove. Whenever you see that the Bible says, the Bible says that God put sickness on the Egyptians. Listen, study carefully. That is not causative, it's permissive. That means he permitted it to come upon them based on them breaking certain laws. Listen, a man can only give what a man has. Your God does not have sickness in him. He can't give it. Can't give it. The Bible declares in 1 John 5, 11 to 12, and this is the record that God had given to us. What? Sickness? No. What did he give? Eternal life. That's what he gave us. And this life is in his son, Jesus. He that hath the son hath life. Hello, somebody. Who has Jesus here? You're a carrier of life. Not life of animals and goats and birds and rats. No. You're a carrier of what the Bible calls Zoe. The God kind of life. That's what you carry. That's who you carry. Colossians 1 7. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So the greater one lives in you than every devil put together in the world. You are a carrier of eternal life. When next you walk up to a checking point and say, Oh God, what do you carry? I carry eternal life. I carry and call. I'm loaded. <laughs> the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. That's overload. Overload. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Your carries away. Listen, when this thing rises in your mind as a reality, nothing takes you out before your time. No bullets. No assassin. No juju. No voodoo. No witch. No wizard. The Bible says, suffer not a witch to lay. Can I tell you something? Any witch that crosses the barrier of this church, you are dead. I've killed you before I came here this morning. You are dead. 
I've settled scores with witches and wizards. You're gone. So if at all in any service somebody drops dead, it's a witch. It's a wizard. Two kings can come to a church at the same time. The king of kings is here. And you're flexing your, your nonsense power. You're dead. Suffer not a witch to leave. Dead on arrival. From the gate you're falling down. The atmosphere is charged. It's heaven proof. You can't touch a naked way and leave. No, sir. All our centers in the nation, you're too hot for demons in your city to attempt again to incurse your facility. No, sir. No, sir. There is an invisible barrier in the spirit that says, Touch not the Lord's anointed. Do it, sir. Do it. Place your hand on your head and pray in the Holy Ghost for 30 seconds. Touch not. Touch not. Will you lift your voice? Will you lift your voice? They are blood tasting demons, but they will not see you. No. They will jump and pass. Everyone that digs a hole for you, they fall into holes seven times deeper. He that rolls a stone in your way will declare, back to sender, back to sender, back to sender. Shakopa, pray for 10 more seconds. Hekaba, Hakaba, Hakaba. You are too hot. You are fire. No wait. No wizard comes near you anymore. Not your business. Not your health. Not your finance. Not your children. Pray for five more seconds, Holy Ghost. Online, pray to hell for the enemy to handle. Ah. In the name of Jesus. Mama Victoria, I read in my Bible that we serve a God that killeth and make it alive. He killeth and make it alive. There's some place you go enter, you don't come back alive. No. You call it one chance? You are one chance. You are the one chance. You enter a bus, she said to you, the blood. The blood. I drink the blood. They go scamper. You are the one chance. Can no 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 go baby girl. They will open the door, say please, Oga, go. Go. Waka they go, sir. You, you could not, Farah. Can I give you the Bible? Sir, the children of Israel did not leave Egypt because they were begging Pharaoh. No, Pharaoh begged them to go. Is it your Bible? Exodus 12. Th- thank you, man. Exodus 12. See, they were urgent to leave. Say, go. In the night, oh. In the night. And me that Baba God struck. Back up. First son of Pharaoh. Back up. Servant, dead. First son of goat, they died. Of chicken, they died. Of rap, they died. Every first son, animals, fish, bed, they died. Pharaoh said, ah, ah, Baba, Jemenu. Get out! Listen. Your enemies will be all there to let you go. That pit they dug for you will forbid you in the name of Jesus. That blood of the God they shed for you will forbid you in the name of Jesus. Why? The blood of the Lamb is crying. Victory, 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 mercy, 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 mercy over you. Yep. Yes, 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 yes. There is a name above every other day. It's above cancer. Above poverty. Above Nigerian economy. What is the name? G. Can we shout Jesus three times? Jesus. Clap your hands on you say. Shout. That name is a strong tower. And the righteous, they run into it. And they are safe. You see, when you are in the name, you talk like me. I'm not bragging. This boy, I'm so skinny, I can't kill a fly. But I'm in the name. My eyes are red. 
I'm looking for the first witch to use as an experiment. Just paka, fall down at the back. Paka, just paka. Tell them, oh. tell them, come again. Tell them, come again. There's a recalibration in the atmosphere. This is not an event center. No, it's a holy ground. The angels are, they are swimming here night and day. They're in covenant, they're in league with this mandate. Come on, the night you're gone. Day you're gone. A robber that makes him come and steal water is a goner. Goner. Come and carry pee. Your God. Microphone, your God. Amen. Can we pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Charge yourself like a lion. You're not a goat. You're a lion. You are born after the order of the lion of the family. Roar like a lion. Don't let the devil roar you. No. He's a coward. Roar, 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 roar. By the blood, in the name, by the blood, in the name. 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 By the blood in the name. Lift your voice, nations. By the blood, in the name. This year will end well for you. By the blood, in the name. Silence the voice of evil authors. By the blood. With long life, shall the Lord satisfy you. By the blood. Run into the name now. Take over. The world is wicked. Full of wickedness. But we're in the name. We took gold in the name. We rule in the name. We shout by the blood. Push me for 10 more seconds. Run into the name of Jesus. 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 I drag you into the name. The blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. In the nation, over in the blood. What I call the blood. I call it the blood. I call the nation the blood. Open your mouth. Something is happening. Every time you raise your now. But as many 
has received him to them gave he what power power do not miss power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name which were born guess what not of blood sir not of the will of the flesh no sir nor of the will of man but of god hey you know if you were to interpret that scripture literally <laughs> suki okay. if you're not born of the blood of man not born of the flesh of man not born of the will of man but of god i believe i am born by the will of god i am born by the blood of god and i am born by his spiritual flesh so you are a product of the one that gives birth to you as they say lion no dey born goat lion no born monkey so you can't be saying that you are a child of god and you are timid and coward we will question your sonship you know after god made adam in the garden he did a test run to be sure that this uh, of course he didn't walk but just in just preacher language yeah? he, you know he, he wanted to prove that this 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 person made in the image and likeness of him <laughs> was walking like him he said adam you come name the animals let me test run what they will be what they are adam in one fell swoop named every animal majestically what names he called them they would say eh, eh, you are walking like me the prototype is walking until it was corrupted by sin it was sin that brought three things into the garden spiritual death sickness and the spirit of poverty so death poverty and sickness were introduced into man's life why the combination of his mouth better still sin and satan but fast track to redemption fast track to redemption to 2000 years ago because god said in genesis i believe 315 if i'm correct says that the seed of the woman will crush your head bruise your head I said you will bite him that means you'll go through some pain uh, but ultimately the seed will what cross your head on the cross as the master hung on the cross it was a painful process but it was on the cross here this right now that satan was crossed and bruised stay with me stay with me in numbers 21 stay with me the story was told how the children of Israel sinned. The mama, they complained. The seven serpents began to bite them and kill them in their droves. They prayed to Moses to pray to God. And Moses prayed to God. And God said something. Hear, hear this. Stay with me, please. I'm fast looking my message all the time. God said to Moses, I am. You get a serpent or better still get brass and mold a serpent with brass and then hang it on a tree say with me tree and he said ah yeah as many as we look at what serpent on the tree they will be what here do you realize that the sign for pharmacies is what looks like a snake on what on a tree you're wondering man of god what does serpent have to do with healing is that not the devil listen the serpent there speaks of sin all right and brass speaks of divine judgment 
What that means is that sin has been judged on the cross. Wow. Well, the Old Testament children looked at serpent on a tree. In the new covenant, our responsibility part of as covenant practitioners. If you were in the early part of the service, it would make sense to you. Morning glory. Yeah. Is to look at Jesus on the cross. Wow. So I put it this way. You look to live. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Just five got it. I said, you look to live. What do you look at? Cancer in my body? No, 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 no. Heart condition? No, 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 no. High blood pressure? No, 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 no. The Bible says, Hebrews 12, verse 2, looking onto what? Jesus. Both the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured what? The cross. The cross. The cross is the answer. Oh boy. Oh, help me Lord. I, I have so much to say, but the time is... Listen, listen. If we knew how powerful the cross is, we will sing more about the cross. We will preach more about the cross. Because the cross is where Satan and sin was dealt with. So brass speaks of divine judgment. The serpent in that case speaks of Jesus hung on the cross. Listen carefully. The Bible declares, I believe, Lord to Malika Sata. Help me, Lord. Matthew 12 32. No, John 12 32. Jesus said, If I be lifted up, huh? yes, if I be lifted up from the earth. I will draw all men to myself. In the words of Jesus in John 3 again, he said that as Moses hey, was lifted up in the wilderness, he said, I also will be lifted up. So what was happening was a typology of what will happen when the Lord will come and effect the new covenant. Let's Slow down a bit. Let's get the record straight. Where does sickness, disease come from? With the established not from God. Hear this. Acts 10 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost <laughs> and with power. He went about doing good, doing what? Healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him question number one who is the oppressor oh come on I just read the Bible to you who is the oppressor where is sickness coming from and disease where is healing coming from Jesus who anointed Jesus the father with what the Holy Ghost with power so God cannot bring what is taken from you? Is that okay? So kick this wrong theology that God uses sickness to train you. Question is this. I'm a father, not perfect. I will never wish my son to learn obedience by asking for cancer. That's demonic. It's devilish. And you tell me the God who is the loving father who is the source of every good and perfect gift, will now place a headache so I can learn obedience. Ah. You don't learn well with sickness. Oh. No. I learn better when I'm well. Sick people don't enjoy learning. They are often times at home on uh, sick, sick, sick leave or whatever they call it. So therefore, Jesus and God cannot be using sickness as an instrument to child train you. No, sir. God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Listen. 
there are, all, there are few times that we see the Bible document the Trinity at work at the same time. Hiya, hiya. I believe the issue of healing and well-being is that important and dear to the heart of God that the Trinity were involved. How God, the Father, anointed Jesus Christ the Son with the Holy Ghost and with power just to bring healing to you. He desires your well-being. Third John 2, I will that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Look at Luke 13, 16. Issue of the woman who for, I believe, 18 years was ridden with sickness, bent over. This is the word of Jesus as he healed the woman on the day of Sabbath. Wow. And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham. You know what it is? He's a daughter of covenant. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we have a better covenant over beyond Abraham. It's, it's, it's established in the blood of Jesus Christ. And that covenant has what the Bible says, better promises. Better life. Better life. Better life. Being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, who bound her? Satan. Lo, these 18 years be loosed from this bond on the day of Sabbath. So for Jesus, the Sabbath was not as material as I want my covenant children wear. Oh boy. He wants you well. He really wants you whole. He's negotiating this morning to get you whole. He called for this service as part and parcel of his, of his wand of mercy and grace to get you whole. That's why once in a month at least, we take time to open the gateway to teach along this line for God to move. You know why? What is not preached will not be confirmed. This Bible, Isaiah 44 26, the Bible says, God confirms the words of his message. He performs the counsel of his servants. So we teach it and give room for God to move. Once in a week, once in a month, we have what is called healing school. Why? To create an atmosphere for you to learn principles of healing. You know why? I tell you why. Healing is a matter of the covenant. Now, let me go to my message. The covenant has terms and conditions. Oh, yeah. We oftentimes read the promises, but we don't as much go, as they say, look at the small fine prints and look at what the conditions are. Because when we keep the conditions, God will also abide faithful in fulfilling the promise he made to us we are in our text that God I'm trying to get that says I'm said if thou yes right hear this if thou will diligently hearken these are conditions to what to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have permitted upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord that healeth thee Saints Isaiah 53 Amplified Classic verse 4 to 5 hear this let me say this to you. Healing is a done deal. Yes, yes. It's a forever settled matter with God. You know why? Malachi 3 6. I'm the Lord God, I change not. If God healed in the past, He's still healing today. If it does not, He's changed. Hebrews 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same. 
yesterday, today, forevermore. So Jesus doesn't change. Still in the healing business. Hear this. Isaiah 5.3 shows us the price our God paid for us to enjoy full redemption, which includes healing. Surely, say with me, surely. surely. Settle, non-negotiable. Surely. Nothing will change it. Not even your, your health challenge. Surely, he has borne our griefs, which are in bracket, sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, and carried our sorrows, uh, yeah, and pains of punishment. Not he will do it to He has done it. Yet, we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as if with leprosy. But he was wounded for our transgression, our own, took our place. Yes, sir. He was bruised for our guilt, our, our guilt, not his own, and iniquities, took our place. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him and with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. People have asked, man of God, if this healing thing is settled like this now, why am I not feeling well? Why did this seemingly righteous man fall sick? Some prayer meetings, attend church, you know. Let me, let me put out a caveat. I don't know. And I may never know till eternity. But I can tell you something. There's something I know I want to share with you. One thing I know is this. Healing from the God side of the covenant is settled. From the man's side is variable. So if you and I align with our condition, it will flow. So one thing I know. Number two, I do know, beloved, that grace has made available everything and anything we need in redemption. But hear this. It takes, listen carefully, the hand of faith to receive what grace has made available. So grace has made available, but faith takes what grace made available. So therefore, if we're going to walk in health, one element that is crucial is faith. And the one way faith comes, Romans 10, 17, by constantly giving your ear to God's word. I shall do it this morning. Don't just hear it once and for all. Hear it over and over again. Sleep on it. Wake up on it. Until it enters your spirit, man. It, it, it changes your psyche and your mentality. Listen, to the point where you rebel against pain and discomfort in your body. Light will make you rebel against the lies of the enemy. Light will make you rebel against the lies of the enemy. There are things around you that are symptoms. The devil says, ah, this lump here. How would I check it well? These are early signs of cancer. It's, it's, it's cancer. Check it, check it. Then you are, you, God forbid, you are alive to paint a picture on your mind. It is growing. It, it is growing. Then you fearfully, worryfully go to the doctor. You already, you already finished. You, you, you brought it with you. <laughs> Your fear produces cancer, God forbid. Not you. Outside here. But the point I'm saying, the enemy uses symptoms to create fear. Listen. Symptoms are an advertisement. A marketer wants to sell to you. It's for you to say, I buy or I don't buy. When you see symptoms that are contrary to God's word, let truth rise in and rebel against those symptoms. Have you driven on the street of Abuja before? And they're hawkers. Knock your door. Okay? Handkerchief. Okay? Buy flag. Okay? Buy a uh, sweet. You say, you say what? I don't want. But if you now wind down to be negotiating, uh, then you have your, 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 that sickness there. That sickness there. You know what I'm saying? At the first instance of the symptom, hey, you crush it like you're killing an elephant, but it's an antelope. You know why? The dragon in Revelation began as a serpent in the Garden of Eden. He grew to become a dragon. 
Don't allow it to grow in your mind before you deal with it. You wait till your body is hot. There's a, yeah, yeah. Papa, papa, pray, papa. No, you came late. Not late. God will show mercy. I'm saying, once the first sign showed up, shut down. Go on a retreat. Pick your Bible. Get a healing message. Here over and over. Until you drive the symptom. Try to grow your mind. Hey, hey, what is hey, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Don't say hey, yeah. You don't pity the enemy. Why? The enemy has no pity. The devil himself, as my brother said, is a merciless devil. He's wicked and cruel. The Bible says that his own mercy is cruelty. He's trying to be nice, is cruelty. Haba. Haba. Please, please. Be fully kitted in the world. Be armed and dangerous. Helmet of salvation. Breastplate of righteousness. Loins got about tooth. Feet short with the purpose of God's goodness. Above all, take what? The shield of it. What you want? You quench! They're fearing that. They're on the run. That's everywhere. Quench them. No, no way here. No room here. Take the sword of the spirit of the world and cut asunder. That you stand for victory and what you see the manifestation of what you believe. What am I saying, beloved? Healing is forever settled matter in the covenant. Just agree with God's word. The next thing I'll say to you, and I will pray, is find out the covenant requirement of walking in health. If you can tell you is to love God's word. Study God's word. Because God's word is a primary medicine for healing. Jeremiah 8.22 His word is the balm in Gilead. Psalm 10720. He said his word. His word healed him. Right now, as God's word is being sent out right now, just in the simplicity of this teaching, as you open your spirit mind to embrace the life that the word of God carries as it's traveling here and there. Listen, that life is expunging every disease causing germ. Virus, bacteria, in the name of Jesus, rise on your feet. Lift your hand to your God and thank Him for the healing covenant that is forever settled in the blood of Jesus. Go ahead. We're about to partake of the table of covenant, but I'll pray one prayer or two perhaps. Number one, I'll give the moment for those who here not born again. Saying, a man of God, I have heard you. My life is on a balance. I really want to begin afresh with Jesus. I'll pray with you shortly. The prayer is to invite the mass into your heart. The next category of people, those who are born again, but you know, your Christian walk has been very epileptic. Hot today, cold tomorrow. Hot today, cold tomorrow. I say, Lord, set my hand ablaze on fire. I want to go all the way. Will you just... Lift your right hand to your God where you are. Place your left hand on your chest. As we pray together in the nations. If you're standing, stand. Lift those hands to the Lord. Let's pray together. Let's pray in faith. Right hand in the sky. Let's pray together. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I open the door of my heart as I invite you, Jesus. Be my Lord and my Savior. With my heart, I believe unto righteousness with my mouth i confess unto salvation i am blood washed blood bought child of the living god thank you jesus for saving me we believe that you have been tremendously blessed by the ministry of apostle goodheart obi equeme it is our conviction that this message has begun a mighty work in your life and we pray that the grace for prompt obedience to the Word of God will rest upon you. We look forward to hear and celebrate your testimonies with great expectations.